I can't believe I got to this point, but we got five spiciest Yugi Kaiba format cards. What are they? Watch to find out. Dual sauce, extra sauce, hit that subscribe. Yeah, so I could not believe after I made my second top spiciest cards of the Yugi Kaiba format that I would be making a third one. I thought I really had to stretch it, but it turns out I actually found five more cards that are pretty spicy in the format. Could you believe it? I really don't think I can make a part four unless it got really, really stretchy. But I think there's some good ones here. But hey, I put my foot in my mouth before because here I am making part three. And I always love making Yugi Kaiba format videos. So if you have any suggestions for future videos of this format, let me know. Wait, 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 don't forget to subscribe if you haven't because that helps me upload more videos and know that you like content like this. All right, so number five, we got Ryukishin Powered. I love this card. Well, at least I love the design of it. This big, buffy, spiky, pink gargoyle. Uh, it's so cool. I love the art for it. And, you know, it's not too bad of a card. It's used mainly in, well, just fiend control decks, but... The fact is, is that it's not that bad of a card. 1200 defense isn't the worst, and 1600 attack isn't too bad. Sure, you got plenty of other stronger monsters, Lodgin, Neo, Battle Ox. But once you get past that, if you want more of beater cards, just a pure, purest beatdown deck, then Rikish Empowered fits that bill of that extra monster you really want there. It's not as gimmicky as, like, let's say, my Umi beatdown deck that uses Great White with 1600 attack and Yumi to boost its attack to 1800. This is just a pure attacking monster. And sure, you could splash some equipped cards in that deck. I think we might be starting to see a little bit of that as the meta evolves for the Yugi Kaiba format. But for Yukishin Powered, yeah, he's not too bad if you want to add that extra monster. So, number five. So number four, we got Forest. I very, very briefly mentioned uh, field cards in my part one, but it wasn't an honorable mention or anything. because so I feel like they're not as good as some people make them out to be. Cards like Yami just helps both players out. So what's the use of that? Because that's the most of the cards people are running are things like Fiends and Spellcasters. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised that Yu-Gi-Oh! creative fuel cards like they are and not the way how speed duel uses skills because in original duel monsters anime and manga it was just already on the field so i'm kind of surprised they didn't incorporate field spells just inherently you pick one and it's there for the whole game but i digress so force i wanted to pick because unlike my spicy umi deck or other cards like yami force can boost up a very fairly particular deck in different ways. You can use it to boost just a battle ox if you want to. You can use it to boost other monsters, I suppose. You could use Pale Beast, which will boost them up to 1700 attack, which is pretty respectable. You could use also with defensive cards in a weird uh, forest stall deck <laughs> using cards like Green Phantom Beast, which actually has 1600 defense, which is pretty high with forest it'll increase it to 1800 defense. That's that, that's a pretty high <laughs> defense. Uh, Beaver Warrior, for example, uh, increases defense to 1700. Plus, its attack isn't too low where you could use cards like Forest or Invigoration to boost it even further. Have some weird Forest stall equip deck. I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot of tech you could use with Forest to make it unique. You could not have a simply a force that you just kind of splash it in. Maybe a one of, maybe, hey, I'll boost my battle locks a little bit once I know my opponent got rid of theirs kind of deck. So I think Forest has some utility that could be used in it that could be spicy, like a Forest stall deck. All right, so number three, yeah, we got the Stop Defense card. Stop Defense is a card that kind of sees play it's more of a side deck card than anything. You want to use it against a lot of defensive decks or stall decks, that sort of stuff. But I feel like Stop Defense could see more play because Stop Defense, it doesn't matter if 
the monster it's using it on is face down or face up. Which means it's really great for all the face down monsters. So if you don't know what it is, you could prematurely activate a trap master or a man eater bug. And you can view other cards like a wall of illusion or a giant soldier stone so you know what you would potentially have been attacking into. There's a lot of great utility with stop defense that I really like, and you rarely see it in the main deck, and it's only really ever used for side deck for a certain type of deck. But I think it does have more utility than just side decking. I think stop defense is a very powerful card that many people may be sleeping on. I think it definitely requires a bit more testing in how much use it is. A lot of people just kind of throw caution to the wind, or they play very defensively, and with Stop Defense, you can kind of play around that, and that's why I really like it, and I think definitely fits for a number three spot. Is you know, it's kind of in the middle of, it's a bit cheeky to it's, hey, this might be kind of really spicy. So, yeah, Stop Defense. So number two, we got the Skull Red Bird. I mentioned Skull Red Bird in my Legend of Blue Eyes Normal Monsters video because it's the strongest monster of that set with 1550 attack. That's great. You don't really see any other monsters around that in this format. Everything else has a very flat attack that you tend to use. With Skull Red Bird, you got 1550 attack, which, sure, yeah, that's 50 points lower than Rikush Empowered. But the thing with Skull Red Bird is that you can use a lot of cards with it. You can use a card like Mountain, a field spell like Force. The thing with Mountain is that you have more cards you use if you include Skull Red Bird than your opponent would, unless you're playing dragon decks, but if you use Skull Red Bird with Mountain, all of a sudden it has 1750 attack and it can beat over a Battle Ox or a Neo, and that's that 50 point difference is very powerful. Plus you can use the card like Followin', which would equip to Skull Red Bird to give an additional 300, which means it would have 50 more points than a Law Jin. So as you can see, that 50 point difference really makes a lot for Skull Red Bird if you can really back it up with other cards. And that's why I really like Skull Red Bird. I love it when it first came out because I had it early on and I thought, wow, this card is really, really powerful. And I think it can translate from the very simple Legend of Blue Eyes format to the Yugi Kaiba format because of that 50 point difference. I think there could potentially be a meme deck wave of mountain decks or Skull Red Bird decks, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of Winged Beast thing. Now, it's primarily just for Skull Red Bird, but hey, if you want to play a 50-card deck, then consider splashing this engine in of Skull Red Bird, Follow Wind, and Mountain. Now, unfortunately, we don't get some other more powerful equip cards in this set to help Skull Red Bird out, like a Gus Fan or maybe one of them. Was it Armored Shell, I think, was for Water Monsters that we don't get yet. But Skull Red Bird, I think there's definitely some very spicy tech that we could potentially see in this. And so go over the four so far. We got Rikish Empowered, we got Forest, we got Stop Defense, and we got Skull Red Bird. So, number one. So number one, and this is actually the card that made me want to do this video, and that was Castle Walls. Yeah, see, the meta of the Yugi Kaiba format currently is favoring more defensive cards, things like Giant Soldier Stone over Wall of Illusion. I never thought I would actually say that. But Castle Wall is very powerful because if you're playing all these defensive cards, if your opponent tries to attack over it, perhaps with even a card like Reinforcements, or if you play even a slightly weaker defensive card, you can inflict damage and potentially get rid of their re Reinforcements. It neutralizes it out. And that's where I really like Castle Walls. I think there's a lot of tech to be had in this, because not only you have another card that you can bait out cards like Trap Master, so it's not the end of the world if your opponent wastes resources to get rid of it. Because either way, you're probably getting some sort of value out of it. I never thought I would think about that with Castle Walls, you know, it's like just 500 defense, what does that really do? Sure, it doesn't really change the game state, but there's plenty of cards in the format that don't really advance the game too much. Cards like Wall of Illusion, Hain Hain, cards like that don't really affect the game too, too heavily, and I think Castle Walls 
as the meta sort of evolves and you're playing more defensive versus offensive decks, Castle Walls is definitely a card you should not be sleeping on because it is the spiciest of the spicy cards of this part three video and definitely why I have it as here on number one. So let me know what you think about the spiciest Yugi Kaiba format cards part three. Do you think I should make a part four? Can I make a part four or should I just move on to something else in Yugi Kaiba format that you would like to suggest to me? Let me know in the comments below or on Twitter at the Janja Zone and also my Discord at the Launch Base. And, and I also want to thank a lot of the other Yu-Gi-Oh! Discords like the Yugi Kaiba Land Discord and the Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy Discord for helping me sort of form my thoughts and a lot of my choices for this stuff. So of course, until then, have a wonderful day.